Welcome back, ladies and gents. On the last show of the week, we're gonna talk about why some C8 Corvette owners are upset, how Dodge moved reverse forward, and what Celine is doing with the new Ford Bronco. Plus, six cars at auction we're keeping an eye on. I'm Tiffany Stone, and this is Haggerty's Daily Driver. Let's buckle up. First up, Chevrolet is dealing with some very angry C8 Corvette owners. Why, you ask? It's because they say their trunks mysteriously opened while driving down the road. Now remember, their trunks are actually in the front now. So would it really be like their frunks are opening? You get what I mean, like a front, trunk, frunks. It's a fun word, just use it. Now, the first formal complaint to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration happened back in April, and there have been five more complaints since then. You know, it's never a good idea when people go to NHTSA. It's kind of like if the dealership was your teacher and NHTSA is the principal. Who wants to be called to the principal's office over the big PA system? I know I've done it. It's not fun. My face gets red. I get all sweaty, and this is exactly what's happening. But the issues did grow from there. Now on one first-hand account on the mid-engine Corvette forum, that turned into a 30, let me repeat this, 30 page town hall meeting of possible causes and solutions of what's been happening. Chevy quickly investigated the issues and found no design or manufacturing error with the latch itself. So the culprit seems to be the Corvette's warning system. Now, if the frunk isn't completely latched, a light appears on the dash and there's also a small chime, both of which the owners say are easily missed, which is actually kind of good news. You know, because Chevy said it's possible to adjust those warnings through an over the air update, which is pretty cool since you won't have to go into the dealership and you will be able to have your problem fixed right there. But until that happens, double check your frunk before you hit the road. You don't wanna have any frunking problems now, do you? Nope, you don't. Now moving on. For most people, backing up a trailer can be a challenging task. Well, for 2021, Ram is going to make it a little easier with a feature called trailer reverse steering control. Now, if that makes it sound like the trucks does the steering for you, I'm so sorry to burst your bubble because it actually, it doesn't. But reported by Mopar Insiders, the system lets owners use a 360 degree surround view camera. It's all a part of their 2021 trailer tow group package available on the Ram 1500. Now before everybody starts yelling at me, I get it. Ram isn't the first to develop such a system. You know, Ford, they've also done it with their trailer reverse guidance. It uses a mix of cameras and sensors to pretty much let you see every part of your trailer. And this is very cool to me. These systems are really helpful. And if you're alone and need to hitch up or park, this is going to be great for you. As some of you can probably attest, misjudging a trailer can be embarrassing at best and expensive at worst. And I know about both of those. And finally, with the Bronco revealed, aftermarket companies are presenting their idea for the most perfect Bronco. Celine has one of the best so far that I've seen, and this is a tribute to Big Ollie. Now, Big Ollie was built by Indy 500 winner Parnelli Jones to run the 1972 Baja 1000. He had raced a modified Bronco before, but for the Baja 1000, he wanted something a little bit more serious. So he brought some of his race car knowledge to the sandbox. You know, in his new Bronco, he had a tube frame and the roof was actually an adjustable wing. Needless to say, Parnelli won and racing trucks have used tubular chassis since. This rendering of a Celine truck does a good impersonation of Big Ollie. It has the huge fender flares, the carbon fiber brush guard, and more lights than a baseball field. And just check out this gold livery. It's giving me nostalgic feelings, and I'm so excited about it. There are no details on the performance modifications, but if Celine is involved, you know and I know that it's probably going to be something very, very fast. Coming up, six race cars are headed to the auction, and we will tell you which ones to watch. But first.
The value of old race cars can be a tricky thing. Some are worth millions and others are worth pennies. To help you navigate that world, Haggerty made a list of six special cars to keep an eye on. Porsche race cars have commanded big money for years, but the Porsche 914 has always lagged behind. However, this Porsche 914 6 GT is not your average car. It comes with steel fender flares, plexiglass windows, a long range fuel tank, and more power. Now, Porsche only made 16 914 6 GT. One of them won its class at Le Mans, another at Daytona, and that car sold for nearly $1 million this year. Now, this isn't a real 914 6 GT, but two years ago, it sold for over $200,000. Let's just say big money for a little car. Another car we're watching is this 1964 Ford Falcon Sprint. It's described as perhaps the most successful FIA Falcon on the European racing scene. It's won at the Goodwood Revival and the Silverstone Classic. And doesn't it just look amazing? Let's take a moment. All right, the moment's done. It's estimated to go for nearly a hundred thousand dollars. Vintage race cars get all the headlines, but what about the more modern ones? Take a look at this 2008 Ferrari F430 GTC Evo. It finished second in its class in the 2008 ALMS series. It's estimated to go for four to $500,000. Let that sink in just for a moment. Now, that seems like a lot for a car that didn't win anything, but in 30 years, who knows? Because listen, back in the 70s, people thought Cobras weren't gonna be worth anything. Oops. Now, there are a few more cars on the list, so head over to haggerty.com media to read all about it. The link is below. That's all for this week. I'll be back on Monday with more car news. Until then, keep driving. I'm still smiling. How, how, how bad am I smiling, guys? Okay, my face hurts.